This program contains adult content. Is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true that religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody! It's not human intelligence! If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? We exhort all officials and stewards of the public good, including those here tonight, to be unified in your endeavors for honesty, truth, and wisdom. We beseech all those present to shun primitive hatreds and superstition, bigotry, prejudice, and atavism, and instead seek equality and justice, and thereby safeguard all worldviews, and treat them equally and with respect. We counsel this entire community to allow the light of truth to shine unobstructed on all matters, and to let not one coveted assumption be spared examination, to let not one archaic belief be spared disgrace, and thus leave no room for ignorance and assumption. So say we all in the name of reason, in the name of free inquiry, and in the name of rebellion against theocracy. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! <laughs> that was on Andrew Vodopich we have in the studio with us tonight. We're very excited about. This is episode 169. Welcome to the Godless Revolution. I'm Dan, and I'm joined in studio also by... Well, of course, Ryan. I'm I'm also here. Matt never says his name. He just says he's here all the time. But yeah, we're really excited to have you in studio with us tonight. How you doing? Good. Great to be here. Excellent. Fun. Good to meet you guys. Hey, very cool. So yeah. yeah, it just I think this is awesome that you're actually here in studio with us. It is cool. Particularly after delivering the invocation. Where so where was that? How did that all come to pass? Um, well, we were at uh, the monthly meeting for Western Colorado Atheist and Free Thinkers. Um, I think it was towards the beginning of July and, uh, I was just telling them about some of the things we were doing, uh, in Denver, trying to get a chapter of the satanic temple going. And, uh, one of the members there had been selected to give an invocation on the 2nd of August at city hall. And they thought it would be a great idea and would, uh, kind of serve their, their, uh, would, would make a, a bigger impression with city hall regarding their invocation policies if it was delivered by a Satanist. So they turned it over to me. Awesome. That's cool. Well, and it, it seemed like there was some pushback from City Hall saying, well, wait, this was given to the atheist, not the Satanist, so he can't do it. Uh, yeah, there were, there were rumors of, of that, that there was going to be some trouble, but they, they got ahead of it and sent a letter to City Hall and reminded them of all the times in the past that one Christian had transferred it to another Christian uh, without any sort of uproar. Mm. So um, they 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 didn't really cause too much trouble about it. No, that's nice. good. They're just like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we have done this in the past, so I guess they got us there. <laughs> yeah. Can't really complain about this anymore. But, I yeah, but that's a lot more reasonable than most of them are. Most of them are just like, who fucking cares what we've done? We're not going to let you do it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, and they're, I mean, they're going to find any excuse they can to complain about shit. So particularly if it's a view that they don't agree with or they think is evil. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, at least it's not as bad as what the, was it the one in Florida where they people got up and started chanting in the room, started praying over top of the invocation. Mm, yeah, I can't remember where that yeah. was, but Yeah, I I believe there was one in Pensacola, Florida that was interrupted a few times with with uh people I, I I don't I can't remember if they were chanting. I, I I think people were actually up out of their seats, causing disruption, and yeah. s- several had to be ejected. I think. Well, yeah. Well, it, I think there were a bunch that just like left the room, and then there were others that were in there doing like in doing the name their own the Holy open Spirit prayer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I rebuke you. I'm gonna cast my own magic spell over this place <laughs> and save everybody. I just want to go into one of those when that's a Christian one, just start screaming like quotes from Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's what it's like. That or comic books. <laughs> well, I, I put a post on a Fox News article, and I was hoping to get a whole bunch of shit for it, but I didn't. Uh, it was the one where it said that God gave uh, Trump the ability to use nukes. And gave I said, him the ability. Well, gave to him use like nukes? God says it's okay according to the Bible. It's cool if Trump uses nukes. Yeah, that was Jeffords. Yeah, so I wrote in there and said, well, but yeah, but did they consult Harry Potter? <laughs> and I didn't really get any response from that one. 
Probably nobody had any idea what you're even talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's silly. Why would he ask it, Harry Potter? It was <laughs> Fox News. So. You, can't, you can't go to other media outlets and expect that they're going to understand the way you derail shows. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize. Let's get back on track. <laughs> uh, so what did you do during last week, Mr. Duffy? I started demolishing a room in my house. Oh, yeah? What for? Oh, I started, I was, I got to painting it, so I'm like, oh, I wanted to turn this into a different room, so I started painting it, and I'm like, well, I need to fix the ceiling. I'm like, well, if I do the ceiling, I might as well rip up the floor and put up the hardwood in, so I'm like, you know what, fuck it, this whole room's getting demolished. So what are you turning it into? Just a TV room. Oh. It's a back, like, little den area that has a fireplace in it that I don't really use, it was, I was just storing stuff in there, and I mm-hmm. said, I'm not, utilize it. I'm going to put it to use. Pretty much. First, I'll destroy it. Pretty much. Then I was like, well, if I destroy this room, that room can be next. I can clear all my TV stuff out of that room and put it in this room. And I can paint that room and do the floor in that room. I'm like, fuck, I'm giving myself too much work to do. Start shuffling shit all around the house as you redo each room? Yeah. Hmm. And you, Mr. Matt? Uh, I didn't really do a lot this week. Um, Worked mostly and then tried to help Brandon get his fucking starter out of his stupid car. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what kind of cars he got? A 97 Kia Sportage. Bech. Ah. And they used a Mazda, uh, Mazda 626 engine, uh, which, of course, the Mazdas are front-wheel drive. This is rear-wheel drive, so it's transverse mounted in the Kia, which means the starter is at near back near the firewall and a huge fucking pain in the ass to get to. I hate working on cars. I really do. I know some people yeah. really like it. I just fucking no. If you have the like the space and the proper tools and all the time, it's not it's not bad. But if it's if it's a pressure situation, you don't have the right shit, and it, it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Well, and I mean, invariably, whenever I would do any work on a car, it was okay. I think I've got everything I need, and then you're missing like mm. one part, or you need to get a special tool to take mm. something off, yeah. or and then it's just you know trips back and forth to the fucking parts store and yep. Getting different tools, different parts. You come back with the wrong fucking part, and you got to take it back and get something else. I think I helped you with that one, camping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That's why this latest camping, that was one of the reasons why the latest camping trip was so nice. Like, I had a truck that I didn't have to worry would just fucking blow up, blow up on the way there. Yeah, that was, that was very nice. It made it much more relaxing. I bet. Uh, yesterday, we had, or Atheists of Utah hosted Mithrin, who was a recent guest on the show. Uh, he gave a little talk on some nutty Mormon history that was pretty interesting. And there were two people in the crowd that were, that were fairly interesting as well. When we first started out, I saw a guy come in who was carrying a book of Mormon and was, was in his Sunday clothing, looked like he was fresh from church. And I thought, well, this might be interesting. And then, Toward the end of everybody filtering in before we got started, another guy came walking in. It's, and it's, you know, 90 something degrees outside. And this ass clown comes walking in in a Donald Trump blue hoodie. It says Trump 2016 mm-hmm. on it, make America great again. And then he had a white make, a, make America great again hat on his head. And of course, because it's so warm outside and he's wearing a hoodie, alarm bells start going off yeah. for a bunch of people. And. Uh, Tiffany, who, you know, volunteers for Atheists of Utah, does a whole lot of work for us, um, also works at the library, and she's like, I'm going to go get my headset in case I need to call security for this guy. Um, so then I got up, introduced Mithrin, and made it a point to say, you know, hold all questions until the end so that there wouldn't be any disruptions while he's delivering his whole thing. So he gets through his whole presentation, and it comes time for question time. And the guy who looks like he just got out of church is the first one to ask any questions. And in fact, he says, hi, you know, my name is, I can't Elder remember what so his name so. was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elder so and so or whatever his name was. And, you know, I, I left church and came over here and uh, yeah, church was pretty boring. So thought, I'd co- thought I'd come and listen to this and see what you guys are talking about and what you're all about. And I just had a couple questions. And he basically just wanted to know the sources that Mithrin had used for a couple different things and a couple points of clarification. And other than that, he was, I mean, totally cool. Like, just asked good questions, very respectful. And then there were a couple other questions. And then um, the Trump guy was, 
I think he might have had the last question that was asked. Mm -hmm. And and it was that whole deal where, you know, I'm just waiting for him to say something. And so it's like, anybody else have any questions? And anybody finally else? had the courage at the very end to say something. And then and then I was like, okay, we're going to have this one last question because we're running out of time. And somebody else asked a question. I was like, oh, well, I guess we're not even going to hear from Mr. Trump. So, you know, that, that guy asked his question. And then Mithrin actually... That guy asked his question, Mithrin answered it, and he's like, oh, and actually I see that we have one more question. Can we take just one more question? And it was from the <laughs> Trump guy. And he's sitting there, and of course I'm recording everything, so mm-hmm. I walked over with a microphone and and held the microphone in his face, thinking I'll fucking slap you with this <laughs> if you get out of line. But So I'm holding it in front of his mouth, and and you know what's cool about Mithrin's presentations is he uses all – LDS historical references and and official LDS records and websites and and everything. So there's you know there's no question as to the source mm-hmm. and that the LDS Church has verified all of this information. But it's just really fucking crazy weird information that he gives you, right? Like cross dressing uh, yeah. members of the <laughs> leaders of the church <laughs> and. You know, people who are excommunicated for sexual dalliances mm-hmm. and all that kind of weird shit. And so he gets to the end, and the only thing that this Trump guy has left in his quiver, I'm sure he showed up thinking that he's going to ask some hard questions, and he's going to prove that this guy is speaking falsely against the church, and he's going to make a stand, and he's going to prove it. He's going to make America great again. You're not going to disrespect my religion. I think you're vastly overestimating the questioning abilities of a Trump voter. (laughs) That's probably right. But in the end, all that he's left with, the last thing that he can make any kind of quibble about is he asks Mithrin, so what is your motivation for doing this? Like, (laughs) why, why would you be telling people these things? And, of course, Mithrin had a great answer prepared. Yeah. You know, he's asked that pretty often. But, I mean, it just it struck me that, like, mm-hmm. okay, you came here, I'm sure, thinking that you're going to be Billy Badass. And then you hear all of this information, and you still feel like you have to get a word in. And the only thing that you can think of is, why would you be telling people the truth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, how dare you? He actually cited sources. I thought he was going to use, like, CNN or something. <laughs> I was like, you little fucking crybaby. <laughs> Why did you even come to this, you know? I'm sure he just thought he was going to be Billy Badass. We have a what matters for this evening. We haven't had a what matters for a little while. Other than the Bigfoot thing was... It was hilarious. I mean, that, was, that wasn't that was a what matters. No. It, was a, it was a Matt thing. And the, That's true. The uh, Zodiac Killer video. <laughs> was, I wonder who made that. They did a pretty good job. It was a Matt inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is more of a true... What matters, though? Oh, okay. Those are kind of jokes. All right. Let's hear it. Emotions are running high in America right now. Again, still. But a huge problem is the misappropriation of anger following the terrible and unnecessary running a car into a crowd of people in Charlottesville, Virginia, over the weekend. Don't think for a second that Trump is off the hook for this just because he wasn't present or that he didn't specifically order this. His reckless, irresponsible, anti-human, anti-progress campaign rhetoric was fuel for their crossfires. Upside down cross fires. Uh, uh, they have told us all along the way that they were excited for Trump for this very reason. They could finally get to be public assholes sans political correctness because, hey, the president has endorsed it. And he has. Trump is clearly playing favorites here. Remember how he said repeatedly that Hillary should be jailed? but wouldn't say anything like that about actual fucking murderers. And by the way, don't fucking contact me about how you think Hillary's a murderer, okay? (laughs) Uh, The heartless statements from some on the right have been predictably disgusting. Things like, shame shame that car was was damaged, it was worth more than the lives it took. Oh, Jesus. You know, what we've come to expect from these brainless, spineless G.I. Joe wannabe slugs. But some on the left have also responded in a cold and poorly thought out way that causes more damage, potentially. This comes after many Facebook posts uh, I've seen and argued against, and the ubiquitous nature that this attitude of this attitude has prompted me to write about it here. The two to tango defense takes many forms, one of which is the now famous from all sides comment by Trump. I even had someone who doesn't live in the in the U.S. criticize the left for not counter protesting hard enough because the car did damage. Let that sink in. The person is on the left 
blaming the left for the alt-right running a car into a crowd. It's all their fault they were asking for it. The implications of this attitude is worse than the right-wingers are, uh, are saying, and here's why. The right is making a value judgment that is atypical by placing a vehicle higher than humans, but we, we already know that the hard right uh, we already know that about the hard right. They've been on a decades-long dehumanization campaign. We know what their opinion is. But if the left can't find solidarity in a moment like this, what hope have we for beating them at the polls or in the media or in our society at large? The left is eating its own, its betrayal, its abandonment, and accusing the innocent of doing something wrong here. Stop doing that. Have I gone fucking crazy? Since when can we not protest a gathering of armed Nazis on U.S. soil? Citizens aren't allowed to oppose racists anymore? Yes, it really is like the minds of the alt-right. Simple. This is the she shouldn't have dressed like she wanted to be raped defense. And you're using it to validate racist murdering Nazis. What the fuck, the left? Yeah. I don't even know who you are anymore. If you're guilty of this, then you're either alt-right or a sympathizer, unintentionally or not. So I'll assume you're not sharp enough to understand why this isn't valid. And I'll provide you with a few examples demonstrating how stupid this argument is. Those children should have decided not to be born to Andrea Yates. <laughs> Twin Tower employees shouldn't have provoked passenger jets. Cambodians shouldn't have worn uh, glasses around Pol Pot if they wanted to live. Auschwitz prisoners weren't nice enough to those gas shower heads. And counter protesters in Charlottesville in uh, invited the Nazi mobile to crash their party. Do you get it now? Here's the thing about Nazis. Violence is what they have because they can't compete in the marketplace of ideas and discussion. They're wrong about nearly everything and void of contemplation and compassion. If I'm the one that has to remind you about compassion, you're doing it so wrong. <laughs> but don't validate their hideous actions. I can't believe I have to remind people that Nazis are the baddies. We're all angry. We're all looking for answers. We all want someone to blame. But we have answers in this case. If you find yourself saying that anything other than innocent victims, you're on the wrong side of this. When trying to know which side is right, it really doesn't get much easier than this. One side are Nazis! There isn't nuance when it comes to racism. The issue is black and white. Oh, and P.S. Alt, right? You've lost any possible claim to the Confederate flag being merely historical, you fucking cowards. Oh, yeah, no kidding. That was really good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I I had uh, somebody unfriend me on Facebook because they made a shitty racist comment that Matt also saw. I don't think Ryan saw it. No, but I didn't see that one. Yeah, Matt replied to it, and then I basically... And it isn't the first time that this guy has posted some bullshit. It's either... it With him, it was either something sexist or racist, and, and equal parts just complete ignorance of the world around him. And I'd had enough and just told him to go fuck himself. So he unfriended me and my feed is that much the better for ha for him <laughs> having done so. Yeah, he's an asshole. It was, yeah. It was it was a hard go fuck yourself, but oh, yeah. he, he deserved every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and it was a hard go fuck yourself because, like I said, it wasn't the first time he's done anything like that, that he's made a shitty comment like that. And so I had just had enough. Like. All right, dude, you're done. I, I'm tired of trying to talk reasonably, to speak reasonably with you or to get you to be rational in your thoughts or not completely fucking ignorant about the comments that you're making. And I'm just done. Like there's, there's no amount of talking that I can do now that would redeem you in my eyes. You're just, you're a hopeless, worthless piece of shit and you can go fuck off. Mm hmm. And that's what he did. And so I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Megan Kennedy. I'm a speaker with the Satanic Temple. You can find me on Twitter at Six Moments. And you're listening to The Godless Revolution. The people who love him don't seem to care. They actually, they, they see it as a, a new kind of authenticity. He's created a wormhole in our political process now where there's nothing so crazy that could disqualify him among the people who like him. Yes. So he can just keep, it's like nuclear bombs of craziness that, 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 that the, the press can't ignore, that the, every time they think, okay, this is the crazy thing he said that's going to harm his candidacy, so let's shine a light on it, it just helps him. 
Please stand by. The Godless Revolution will continue in a moment. Hey, everybody. This is X. And I'm Kyle. And I'm Felicia. We're the Utah Outcasts. Three out, unashamed, and active atheists living in Utah. And we are personally inviting you to let us love your ears each and every week. As we take the news, current events, and pop culture and give it a little twist. A love twist with consent. And we'll be joined each week by a special guest to tell us what makes them an outcast like us. Come find us. The Utah Outcast. On PodHell.com, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And on UtahOutcast.com. We finally bought that domain off the kids handing out mixtapes in the mall. Come be an outcast with us. Take care of yourselves out there. Bonne nuit. And you're welcome. Thanks for listening. Now back to the show. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. So a long, long time ago in a galaxy really, really close to the one we're in now, you were born, Mr. Vodapitch. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, you are. Is it Vodapitch? Okay. Yes. I always worry when, when I say that I'm going to be murdering your last name somehow. That's uh, why Dan says the names and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're from Colorado. You traveled here to Utah from Colorado. Have you always lived in Colorado? Uh, no, actually, I was born in Arizona. Oh, yeah? What um, part yes. of Arizona? Uh, right outside of Prescott. Mmm. Prescott. That, that must be a, a local or regional pronunciation. I always say Prescott. Prescott. I yeah. have no idea. I was four when we left, so. It, 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 <laughs> it is Prescott. Is it? Yep. Oh, wow. So we're fucked up. Like yep. like Hurricane here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you were born in Arizona, moved when you were four? Uh, yeah, four four or five, right in there. It's all kind of blurry. But, uh, yeah, we uh, from there we moved to Nevada, um, lived outside of Las Vegas for Less than a year, and then from there to Ely, and then from there to Elko, and then to Colorado when I was 15. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Moved around quite a bit. Yes. Were your parents in a line of work that you that they would move very often for work? Or? His dad's uh, a Russian hitman. He already told us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, his cover was construction work, so he had to go where there was construction. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so, yeah, the economy caused us to move a few times, and uh, then... Uh, from Elko, we moved out to Grand Junction, Colorado, um, after my grandfather passed away to live with my grandma and help her out. So, Oh, and is grandma still around? Um, no, she passed away a couple of years ago um, in, a, in a nursing home. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but at least you were there helping out and taking yeah. care of her for a while. So are you an only child? Uh, no, I'm the youngest of five. Youngest Ooh, of five. Yes. <laughs> and you were raised... Uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, yes, right. Are your parents are, are they like all in? They're very much part of the uh, Jehovah's the, Witness Church. Yes, they. Um, my mother was born in, and uh, my father, I, I believe he was seven years old when his mother converted, or as they call it, came into the truth. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I love that. You didn't know the truth until you came to our yes. church. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't. I love, have, I love that it's came into the truth. Too. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like an info war type thing. <laughs> Penetrated the truth like a mofo. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of convenient terminology because you know, Mormons have Mormonism and there's Catholicism and everything, but Jehovah's Witnesses, there's not really a word for the belief system, so they just call it the truth, and that's like being a, a trademark <laughs> thing almost. <laughs> uh, can you say you, you came on truth's back? <laughs> uh, the elders might take you in the back room for that one. <laughs> uh. Uh. Okay. So, so mom and dad are both members of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're witnesses. Yes. We'll refer to them as witnesses from now on. I, <laughs> I heard you use that pre-show. So yeah, I thought, oh, that's a, that's mm. a easy way to, to refer to it instead of like, you know, Mormons, you can say Mormons or LDS. Mm -hmm. They prefer Latter-day Saints, members of the Church of Jesus yeah. Christ of Latter-day yeah. Saints. Way yeah. too long. Yeah. That's a fucking mouthful. Yeah. You're Mormons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, and then the, and then they try to say, "Well, that's kind of a pejorative." Look, fucker, don't give me <laughs> shit to like. I'm I'm just explain. I'm I'm not gonna fucking spend my week trying to explain what the hell stupid shit you believe in. Like you're a fucking Mormon, dude. 
<laughs> anyway, Andrew. <laughs> okay. Yeah, where were we? So, <laughs> so mom and dad are all in. You're out. Are your siblings all still witnesses? Um, all but one. My, I have one brother who is currently disfellowshipped, but he's trying to get back in. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. so he's still a believer, but yes. he did something naughty. Yeah, he he <laughs> went through. <laughs> he, he's had a, a a rough year and got himself in a little little trouble. Yeah, with him, but uh, yeah, he's he's still wanted to get back in. Um, but he he's the only one that currently speaks to me as well. So he mm, he's yeah. been on the receiving end of the shunning before. Uh, so uh, he 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 still keeps in contact with me. So would he? So if he gets back in, would he still be able to talk to you? Or um, he he has said that he would. I I think yeah. he's he's not quite a hundred percent on board with that anymore. So yeah, I I, I think he knows it's. Well, he's seen firsthand yeah. the harms that come along with that. Yeah, and it's it's been hard seeing him too because my whole family kind of struggles with depression quite a bit, and he's on, on top of the his marriage falling apart and a few things, um, being severely depressed and cut off socially from mm-hmm. everybody he's ever known. That's that's a not a good thing. Well, I wonder if anybody has ever asked anybody in the upper echelons of the church if they've thought about that, right? Like. If somebody does something that, you know, like your brother, he he did something because his life is falling apart, whatever, and then he's shunned from the church, that just exacerbates whatever problems he had that, that led to him doing something untoward or something that the elders didn't approve of in the first place, right? Do they, do they ever stop to think that maybe we're just making the problem worse by uh, doing this to somebody? I'm pretty sure it's been brought to their attention by a lot of people, but their main concern is isolating the people who are still in from potentially corrupting influences. So they got to insulate the, the faithful community. And, uh, I mean, there, there are instances of people who have committed suicide after, after being disfellowshipped and cut off. And, uh, it's, it's just more important for them to, to protect the, the community and so keep them indoctrinated. The church is priority then over people. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's disgusting. Um, so most of your siblings are still in. Your parents are still in. You obviously are not. When did you leave the church? Um, it was November of 2015 that I that it was made official. I dated my. Oh, we we left together. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I left together. Andrew's we, wife Myrna's in the studio with us also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you pulled out of the truth and never looked back. <laughs> 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 and then I got tested. <laughs> was Thanksgiving you uh, yeah, it was it was Thanksgiving of 2015 was the day that they made the announcement. We dated our letter of disassociation for the 5th of November, which was the 20th anniversary of my baptism, which was oh, a nice oh, wow. little <laughs> cherry on top <laughs> for that one. But yeah, we we left voluntarily. Um, up to that point, we. We were in good standing with the congregation, didn't have any problems, um, weren't, weren't being counseled or anything like that, but, um, it was, uh, probably around, probably the summer of 2015 that I, I started to wake up mentally and get out. Um, I, I started to identify as an atheist probably late summer 2015. And then, uh, it was November when we, um, finally made it official. We thought about, trying to just fade out and stop going to meetings and hope that people would leave us alone. Uh, but then we, we learned about some of the, the child abuse scandals and things like that and didn't want to be associated with it. And we knew that we would never truly be left alone either. Even something as simple as somebody seeing a, a Christmas tree or something in our living room could lead to us being disfellowshipped for apostasy. So do you just, it was just ripped the bandage off and said, you know, it's all in or all out, so just go... Completely all out. Yeah, yeah. We kind of knew what we were in for. We knew that people would uh, would avoid us. Pretty much, well, having been born in and being such a an insulated community, that's pretty much all you have as far as friends and family is fellow witnesses. And we knew they'd shun us, but it was a bit of a surprise to see some of them uh, get a little nasty about it too. It's not enough just to avoid them. You get a lot of dirty looks, and she was uh, harassed by by text for that. It was our first Thanksgiving ever because they don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Even. Oh, right. So we yeah, just had yeah. our first Thanksgiving, had an awesome night. And then the text started rolling in and they were sending her pictures of 
there are kids who, who called us uncle and auntie and, um, just crying because they were telling their own kids that we were as good as dead, basically. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, it was. I mean, besides just the text and stuff, did they, did they stop by your, your house and, and try to harass you in that matter or try to pull you back into the fold at all? Or is um, it? In, in my letter, I specifically requested that they not contact us. So they, <laughs> that is the one way to get the witnesses to stop stopping at your house is <laughs> become apostates and they'll leave you alone. <laughs> so what you're saying is I need to join the church for a short time and then become an apostate and they won't knock on my door yeah. anymore. Yeah, we're going on two years that they haven't set foot on our property. <laughs> they would accidentally come to our door while we were still in. Thinking that somebody else lived there. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but we, yeah, you know, apparently we're on every single list they have <laughs> yeah. not to come by. Oh. <laughs> They've got your photo on their little pamphlet or their their <laughs> iPad now that they carry around or whatever. <laughs> so you said that was that was summer of 2015. So prior to that, were you all in? You were a, you were a faithful believer in in the truth. I w- I was I was extremely indoctrinated into it. Um, it it's been a struggle because. Being a witness is extremely time consuming. It's a major drain on your time, more so than most religions. When I was a kid, we had, uh, five, well, it was three nights a week, five meetings in three nights a week. So you had about five hours worth of meetings and then all the prep time and pre study time. And you're expected to put so many hours a week into the ministry and everything else. And as an adult, there was a good, good portion of time I was working probably 65 to 80 hours a week trying to make the meetings, trying to keep the house together and do, do everything I have to do on top. And like I say, there's, they expect you to not only attend the meetings, but study for them on your own time, have your own personal study, have study with your family. It's, it, it's just a, a never ending cycle of, well, on, on top of having a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the LDS church yeah, as far d- as the time yeah. commitment goes. Yeah. It was, it was pretty rough. And, uh, the, there, there's no point as a witness that you're ever doing enough. They, they don't necessarily directly hound you, but you're constantly being reminded of what you're supposed to be doing and you're supposed to be giving everything you have and all these reminders of people in third world countries who are fording crocodile infested rivers and walking a hundred miles to get to the, the nearest kingdom hall or whatever. Yeah. And so you're, just by your own conscience, you're never good enough. I, I I constantly felt like a failure as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, even though I was I was doing everything I could. And you still felt like crap because it's just pounded into you yeah. that you have to do as much as possible. Yeah. You can never do enough. Never. Oh, man. So, summer of 2015 rolls around. What uh, what what happened? What What lit the spark of doubt? Uh, well, my wife was actually a half step ahead of me. Um, she has <gasps> a corrupting influence. Yes, yes. bad association. <laughs> well, was that was that the winter that the Cosmos series came out? Uh, the the re release. She had watched Cosmos prior to that, and that I, I think, as far as she's concerned, that that may have been one of the the things that got her got her thinking a little bit. Um, she has uh, she's always had a lot of trouble with severe anxiety and panic attacks, and at the time, she was quite agoraphobic, so even just being at the Kingdom Hall was very difficult for her. And for quite a while, they'd make little provisions for her. She could sit in a back room where it was quiet, so she wasn't surrounded by people constantly. But after a while, it seemed like some of the elders in the congregation kind of thought she was just after attention or something. So instead of providing ways for, for it to be manageable for her, um, they were just kind of treating her like she was after attention or just didn't want to be there. And, um, it, it, it even, it took a while for it to sink in with me, um, that they were actually treating her that way. And that, I think that for me, that kind of seeing her treated that way and seeing some of the people that I had assumed always had our best interests at heart being assholes was, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it didn't yeah. quite sync up with, with what, what the truth was supposed to be and we were supposed to be the happiest people on earth and supposed to, you know, the, the people at the kingdom hall are supposed to be closer to you than your family pretty much. And, and I, I think that's what got me questioning. And she, she finally got to a point where she had to take a break. She couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. 
I still still believed it was the truth, but she just she couldn't keep subjecting herself to that. And so, me being head of the household, I, I <laughs> the <laughs> patriarch. Yes, I'll handle this, dear. <laughs> so I decided that you know that's fine. You do what you need to do, but I'm going to double my efforts. I'm going to increase my Bible reading. I'm going to strengthen myself as the family head, so that when when she's ready, I can be there to to help her back up. And so I did start reading the Bible more, and a few days in my I wasn't looking at it through the same filter that I had before, uh-huh. so I figured I'd, I needed to prove it to myself all over again, which I'd never actually proved it to myself. I'd just been raised with it, and I think two or three days into that, I just kind of threw the Bible down. I was like, this is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't even the crazy parts, really, but it was just seeing the, the immorality of, of God and the, mm. just how ridiculous it was. So you got to Genesis? I, <laughs> I I was in Genesis. Um, oh, wow. I'm I'm curious about some of the beliefs, uh, like who who Jehovah God is in uh, for the witnesses, who Jesus is compared to. Well, let's not compare it because they're all fucking different. But <laughs> yeah, they they believe uh, that uh, they don't believe that uh, Jehovah and Jesus are the same being. They believe that Jesus is the son of. Jehovah, who is the the Most High, the God of the Old Testament, and all that. Mm. So there's there's no Trinity, and and Jesus is not God Himself. Um, so they 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 believe in in worshiping Jehovah through Jesus as Jesus is a a mediator, and you know prayer prayers to God are intercepted by Jesus, oh, <laughs> and, oh. and and He lets them pass <laughs> if you do it right. <laughs> really? So he's, he's the guy that checks the mail in the prison. To make sure it can go to the yeah. prisoners. No. Yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a fucking filter. Yeah, yeah. he's an all star cornerback who's just <laughs> swatting yeah. prayers away. <laughs> Jesus Rebus. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I heard some uh, talk about the archangel Michael being uh, intertwined with Jesus at some point. Yes, they they believe that uh, prior to coming to Earth as a human. Jesus was known as Michael the Archangel, so they believe they're one and the same, just hmm. one name used pre-human and pre-knocking up Mary, and the other right. ones a- after he came to Earth. Just to make it all a bit more confusing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, and Mormons think Michael was Adam hmm. and helped Jesus, Jehovah, create the Earth pre, hmm. pre all of that stuff. Yeah, it's, they, they, they do believe that... that uh, Michael or Jesus was the the first of all the creations, and that he assisted with the creation of everything else after that. Um, I wonder if that was a common belief in the in the burnt over district at that time that it would that it would permeate both of those surviving. Possibly, but I don't know. I, I guess I'm wondering why an all all knowing perfect creator being would need Help. an assistant. Because he's a lazy fucker, dude. He, he doesn't get tired, but he still took a day off. All the power in the world. He can't do everything in the blink of an eye. He's got to take six fucking days to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he's got to rest at the end of it. Like, oh, I'm so tired. And he's got to have help doing it, apparently. Yeah. And he can't name him. He can't name shit himself either. He's got to have Adam do that. Well, Adam was bored. So, <laughs> so what happened when Jesus died and was resurrected? Um, well, they, they believe that he was, he was dead for three days and, uh, was resurrected as, I, I guess, a, a spirit. <laughs> and, uh, see, so yeah, he was, he was alive for, th- excuse me, dead for three days <laughs> and raised back up. And then he, d- he did his little bullshit on earth for a few days and showed the holes in his hands and whatnot. And then he ascended to heaven where he's ruling alongside Jehovah. Mm. Weird. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So he didn't during the three days he was dead. He didn't travel to America and talk to the Lamanites and the Nephites. Uh, <laughs> no, they left that part out. <laughs> was oh, he, that's I'm getting you confused with the Mormons, right? Right. <laughs> was he physically resurrected or was it just spiritual? Um, they they present it as a spiritual thing, but apparently he he was able to conjure up a body a couple times to to show off to people. Weird. Hmm. So part zombie? 
<laughs> Only when he yes. wants to be. Oh, Gotta okay. have something for people to stick their fingers in if I'm saying check out <laughs> <Well>. my holes. <laughs> right, right. Not, not, not to that lead us out. <laughs> astray too far, but I was reading an article the other day where they said they found the first ever uh, physical proof that people were actually crucified, and they made the Bible incorrect in their studies. But this was a religious group saying it, because their, their study said it's the the nail placement it would have been impossible to hold the body up by placing a nail through the palm. Mm -hmm. They said they were either tied or through the actual arm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus having a hole in the hand would be completely mm -hmm. false because that wouldn't work for a crucif crucif uh, to crucify someone. It wouldn't hold couldn't up. Support the weight it of couldn't support body. the weight of the body. It couldn't support the weight of the body. It just ripped yeah. through. So they, most likely it was through the mm -hmm. arms mm -hmm. and through the heel bones. Yeah. Most of the torture porn in the witness literature actually shows the nails in the wrist. Okay. And the forearm. Yeah. So, it is torture it, porn, it, man. It they is. leave that. They leave that <laughs> shit. The little pamphlets and stuff that they leave behind. I'm like, yeah. this is gonna terrify kids. Yeah. Like, you can't just leave this shit laying around, man. You probably mainly get it around springtime. They they don't leave things in people's doorsteps near as often as they used to. Oh, I've been getting a lot Except, lately. Uh, in in the spring, their their main event is the the memorial of Jesus' death. So that that usually features a prominent picture of a. Jesus all bloody and hanging on the stake. <laughs> That's why I was going to get to that, too. I want to keep talking about this because I don't want my boner to go away. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they, 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 they don't use the cross, right? They talk about him on a delicious T-bone steak. Yes. Um, what? What? No, just just a steak. <laughs> oh, I was not like, a, not a cross, but a like, steak. Are, are you being serious? Right now? <laughs> I have not heard this before. <laughs> no, they. Um, I, I don't remember the exact word used, but uh, they. The explanation for that is that the word used um, somewhere at some point talking about uh, Jesus' execution, um, that's was Stavros, I want to say. Yeah, one Greek of the Greek word. translations, yeah. Um, supposedly refers to a single upright piece of timber or something like that, so... That's that's where they that's why they're the true religion stuff like that that yep. differentiates yeah. them from everybody else. <laughs> well, and that's why they're easy to pick on because <laughs> true Christians will say it's a mistranslation, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Well, and when Ryan started talking about the, they they found evidence of people who were crucified and they you know Christians have it wrong, whatever. I thought you were going to talk about the fact that I I heard recently that it wasn't. You know, when people were crucified, it wasn't on a thing that's shaped like a T. It's it's on an actual X. Well, that was the thing. In, in this one, they all they had was there was they found a box that had some bones in it, had some remains in it with a mm -hmm. human remains and a and a baby. And human remains and a baby and a baby. Well, the baby's not quite human. It hasn't developed far enough yet. <laughs> one and a half humans were in there. <laughs> but uh, well, I guess on the box, like the translation on the box was "Son of the Crucified." Uh -huh. So that's what they said. Well, it says crucified right there that the child was the son of whoever was crucified. Hmm. And the heel bone of the guy, because the body's body, I guess, was in pieces. It wasn't all like it had been chopped up. Still had the uh, uh, rod through the heel bone with a piece of wood or it's like fossilized wood at hmm. the end of it. So I said, hey, this is proof that, you know, it says crucified in the box. And this guy still got a spike in his heel with wood on it. I would imagine an X would be a lot easier to hoist and, and, and keep mm -hmm. in place. Yeah, mm -hmm. a cross is really kind of cumbersome. You kind of got to dig a hole for it and bury half it in the ground. Yeah, and trying to hoist, lift that up, and get it to stay would be kind of a project. And at the rate that the Romans were doing this, I, I just, I think, throw them on an X and prop it up and get out, get onto the next one. Like, yeah, just, I would just say it's not going to fuck with all that. Well, yeah. sure, but. <laughs> but you want to make a you yeah, yeah, make that a show make of a it. very good example. Of yeah. it. <laughs> Hi, this is Yvette Dontremont, a.k.a. The Cybabe, and you're listening to Godless Revolution. You can find me at Cybabe.com, at my Twitter account, at The Cybabe, and if you've hunt really hard, you can find me at Pornhub. I dare you. This is a, a point I've made before, and I, I, I don't think it's original with me. I think other people have made it, but my, my claim is that if Trump were one-tenth as bad he would appear much worse because like everything he does is, is appearing against a background of so many lies and so much craziness that you can barely even weight its value. The next rant will start right after this. Here follows a public service announcement for the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast. <laughs> 
Greetings, Americans! Over here in London, we are well aware that not all of you are loud, xenophobic, racist, sexist, religious nuts. But many of your politicians who display these frightful traits seem to be quite popular. Particularly a certain wall-obsessed, small-handed, best word using, daughter-perving, war-inciting, candy-floss-headed clown. To those of you who choose to follow such balderdash, we strongly recommend not to listen to the two sceptical chaps. It probably won't be your cup of tea. Otherwise, give us a listen. Each episode we cover any news or current affairs from across the globe. Things that annoy or delight us. That's two as in the number two. And sceptical with a K. The wrong way to spell it. Cheerio! Rejoining the Godless Revolution podcast now. <laughs> so, so we've we've got to 2015, and doubt creeps in because of the way that they're because of the way they're treating Myrna, your wife. And by you said by late summer you were identifying as an atheist, though you're still attending the hall and and doing all that kind of stuff. So, what what led you from? doubting because of the way they were treating her. I mean, you said that you started reading, reading the Bible and you're like, this is bullshit. What else, what else did you do? And then was, was there a tipping point or can you name some of the, some of the blocks along the way that you, that you released and, and were able to have you realize that you were mm-hmm. an atheist? Well, um, it, it, reading the Bible wasn't a new thing with the witnesses are, yeah, I religious about it. <laughs> they daily Bible reading is it is essential at, for witnesses. So I, I I've been through the Bible more times than I can remember. Huh. But it's just that that was the first time that I I I wasn't relying on previous explanations and their apologetics and stuff. And I I was starting to analyze it through my own morality and logic. Well, and you weren't being you weren't being fed individual passages as this is a great passage because of this reason, you know, coming fully stocked with an apologetic and the verse and everything, right? right. You're able to just read through it and see what it uh, actually says unfiltered. in context, yeah. Yeah. It's and and I I had done that too cause just reading through the you you'd read a chapter or two a day a lot of times, so I've I I've seen it all in its context, but just always in the back of your mind is, oh well, it it's it's just that God is slaughtering these infants and things like that. So, <laughs> so you never really question it. So I, I was starting to just God's all good. So there's yeah. got to be a good explanation. Exactly. Yeah, you have to. You're you're working backwards from. I, I know God isn't a homicidal maniac. So how can I explain this? <laughs> hmm. But uh, I I went through the process pretty quickly. I th- I think I. I'd been compartmentalized quite a bit mentally, and all the the questions and doubts and things had just been shoved in the back. So when I finally accepted that it was bullshit, it all just opened up. And I probably the the one thing that finally sealed it for me is a two minute Google search on the flood. Because <laughs> 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 we're 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 not. Not young Earth creationists. We're not that crazy, but we they do still believe in the flood. They, you know, they they believe that the Earth is old, but that humanity is only six thousand years old. Okay. So, so yeah, then one, once I had figured that out, um, then I I started watching YouTube videos that were mostly picking on uh, young Earth creationists, so I, I didn't feel too bad. <laughs> But then every now and then there'd be a little thing here. Yeah, and everybody and, knows they're crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Potholder fifty four was my one of my favorite yeah, YouTubers. I like I like watching his stuff. Um, yeah. And then uh, I I started watching uh, the Atheist Voice Channel with Hemant Meta, and um, I I was reluctant. She she's the first one that threw out the word atheist, and I thought, oh, you just don't don't go that far. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Uh, the universe will hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh I was kind of reluctant and maybe maybe over a week or two I kind of went from thinking well maybe maybe it's just the witnesses that are wrong then well maybe there's something out there to if there's something out there I should know about it otherwise he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um and then it was one of Hemant's video videos that just explained what atheist means and what it doesn't. I was like, "Oh yeah, I am." Okay. <laughs> huh. And and that was <laughs> 
<laughs> that's yeah. about it. Oh, that's me. Okay. Yeah. That explains yeah. things. I, I don't have to claim to know that there's nothing out there. Just, I don't believe, believe it. In a God. Yeah. The Carl Sagan's book, uh, Demon Haunted World mm-hmm. was the thing that did that for me. The, after reading that and, and having him explain what an atheist is and why a lot of the arguments for a God are unconvincing, I was like, oh, well, yeah, I, that's me. That's what I think. I, yeah, I think a lot of it's bullshit and that's what an atheist is. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I must be an atheist. Okay. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. That's pretty much how it went for me too. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm in the middle of that book right now. I'm, I've got a lot of making up for <laughs> lost time, 32 years in the cult. And, uh, well, yeah. So how old are you? I'm 34 now. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we left when I was 32. Um, not quite two years out. Um, so the, the last couple of years, I've just been mainlining books on evolution and <laughs> all that stuff and <laughs> learning all the science that, uh, was, was, wasn't really allowed. <laughs> So do Jehovah's Witnesses homeschool for the most part? Um, it's getting to be more popular. Yeah. Um, they're, they're really worried about the whole uh, bad association thing. Um, I wasn't homeschooled, thankfully, because that was about the only socialization I got. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is uh, increasingly popular. Yeah. Because then you, you can keep, keep them completely insulated in their little cocoon and, mm-hmm. and never have to question anything. And then, of course, they can go out in the ministry even more with their parents. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can recommend a book for you if you're still doing all that. Uh, it's one that I've read probably two or three times, and it's takes science and makes it more easy to understand in the way that it relates to religion. It's called Atheist Universe by David Mills. Okay. And it's a quick read. It's pretty easy, and I think you can pick it up for pretty cheap. And I have that whole thing just highlighted and noted, and every, I just thought uh, that book was <laughs> – Huge for me when I was when I was trying to figure all that stuff out. Yeah, I remember you recommending that book when we had David yeah, I haven't Silverman plugged on. it in a while, and yeah, I still haven't read it. I I think it's on my Kindle app. I think like you said I, that I, then I paid too. For it, but I, yeah, I haven't read it. I just like people recommend a book. I'm like, yes, I I need to read that, so I'll add it to my queue, and then I don't fucking read anymore because I'm busy doing other shit. And so I've just got this ever increasing pile of books that I need to finish. Yeah, that one's one of my favorites. Yeah. I was pre Twitter Dawkins too when I was coming out, so I was like, he was the one that defined atheism for me the first time when I oh, heard yeah. atheists do that. But. Yeah. Um. So you start identifying as an atheist in, you said the the end of summer of 2015, and then you stick around until you said right around Thanksgiving is when you 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 resigned. You weren't kicked out. Right. So. What was it that led you to say, okay, well, I'm I'm just going to resign. I I can't handle this anymore. We're out. Um, well, for me, I, I think the, the major tipping point was learning about the uh, child abuse scandal going on in Australia, where um, in their effort to handle everything internally, um, the Australian government was doing uh, investigations into a whole bunch of different associations, religious and secular to see what their policies on handling accusations of uh, child sex abuse were. And uh, when they, the Jehovah's Witnesses was one of the last ones they got to, and they said it was the most flawed organization they'd come across. They found... Worse than the Catholics. Yes, they found, I think it was 1,006 unreported Ooh. instances of child sex abuse. Oh, wow. That did not go reported to the police that were handled internally, um, if handled at all. And, uh, well, surely some handling was going on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was just in Australia. And, uh, who's just in Australia? (laughs) No, God, (laughs) dad jokes coming. Sorry, (laughs) Uh, yeah. Uh, anyhow, back to the pedophilia. (laughs) Uh, In in, uh, a lot of those circumstances, situations, um, a lot of times the victim is the one that ends up getting the worst punishment because in their effort, they're, they're very big on, on the image that's presented to the public. And the, the, one of the worst things you can do is to bring reproach on the organization. And by extension, Jehovah's, Jehovah's name. So we, we bear the name of the true God, obviously. Mm. 
Um, and so any negative exposure like that in the media or anything is, is horrible. And so they, they're trying to keep everything handled internally. And if that's not good enough for a victim and the victim dares to warn people in the congregation that there's uh, a pedophile in there or, um, seek, uh, talk to the police or whatever. Pedophiles that, in their midst. I think they made a movie yeah. of that, right? Isn't that about Jane Goodall? <laughs> Never mind. What? I think that was, I think that was primates. <laughs> oh, gorillas in the midst. Gorillas. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't even rhyme with pedophiles. <laughs> in the midst. Never, never mind. Oh, oh, oh. Never mind. <laughs> usually I'm the one that has failing jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you usually are. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, it, failing to, to keep it under wraps properly, or if, uh, they have this thing that's often referred to as the two witness rule that comes from one scripture in the Old Testament where, you have to have two witnesses to establish any any sort of judicial matter. So pedophiles don't tend to do anything with an audience. So no. a lot of times it, it can't fully be established. So if the victims dare to open their mouth after something is supposedly cleared or can't be proven, then that could be seen as disrupting the peace and the unity of the congregation. And then oh, they could be in trouble. They there, There's instances of teenagers who've been raped, being kicked out, disfellowshipped, losing their families. Um, for just warning people. So they're re-victimized. Yes. It, they, they try to keep other people from being a victim, and then they're re-victimized, and then that still allows this pedophile to go on doing what they're doing. Yeah, it sounds like they've built this system up around protecting the, those pedophiles, specifically. It, yeah, it, it it almost, they're they're mostly concerned with the, the reputation of the religion, but it has the definite side effect of protecting the pedophiles. Well, in a sense, a pedophile knows the rules on who can be convicted and can't be convicted, and they know how to work the system. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, I, I had no idea any of that was even going on. And uh, um, the, So so how did you find out about that? I mean, you're, did you just see something online about it, or um, did somebody in your own congregation say something to you? Or uh, No, I, I Googled. Jehovah's Witnesses. That's that's one thing they don't want you to do is Google that. You go <laughs> you go straight to JW.org if you need to if you need to get on the internet. That's where all the answers are. <laughs> JW.org. Yes. Well, and that's that's something I was actually kind of wondering too. As far as I mean, if, if they're trying to keep you that tight in, I'm surprised they don't make it a rule where hey, you can't have the internet in your house. If um, you want to be able to search yeah. the internet, you come to the church where it's a locked down computer system that can only be searched on certain engines. Yeah, it's not quite that bad. They they have progressed a bit. I know uh, for a while they they were really preaching the the dangers of the internet and everything, and then just when Facebook and everything was starting to take off, they were warning people away from social media and everything. But now they they just have to rely on their on the their stories about apostates and how dangerous apostates are, and don't don't ever click on anything having to do with Jehovah's Witnesses other than JW.org because it's all lies and slander and and you're risking your immortal yeah. soul. You have the truth on your side, but they'll trick you. <laughs> Satan's in the digibits. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. This the the view of Jesus is so different. I mean, I've I've been following the conversation, but in the back of my mind, this entire time since we were talking about him intercepting prayers or whatever that was a while ago i know <laughs> and I, i've just had this picture of jesus somewhere midway between heaven and earth like a 50s switchboard operator hello heaven can you please hold hello heaven i'll put you through now hello heaven. Well, yeah, well, just, yeah. that's all he does well, you have to end your prayer in jesus name that way he's like oh okay let's oh, send this one through that way he knows <laughs> it's right. oh right right that's yeah. a hashtag in jesus name <laughs> <laughs> so, the mormons believe that too actually that it has yeah. to pass through. That's why everything I say is these things in the, the name, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Yep. Mm. But that's not his real name. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, why guess, it doesn't work. I mean, it's like putting a post-it stamp on there, like an address, I guess, isn't it? When you say, in Jesus' name we pray. It's the zip code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so, you, so you resigned. Is Is that something... Uh, I mean, you said that you had thought about, you know, just not participating anymore. Hopefully people wouldn't hound you or whatever. Is it 
Okay. Is it rare that people actually pen a letter to officially resign from the church, or do most just kind of hope to fade away and and the and the people will leave them alone? I I think most do fade away. If if you have the circumstances where you can do it, that's ideal because you don't have to necessarily lose everyone. Although they are cracking down on that too. Um, they're, they've just fairly recently started encouraging people to essentially shun people who are inactive in the religion mm. even. But one of our concerns is we, we're just, we're trying to live our lives, trying to just put some distance between us and the last 32 years. And so just the, just knowing in the back of our mind, anytime we bumped into somebody from our congregation at the grocery store or something, there'd be all the questions. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, framed in a real positive way, but trying to pry for information. If they happen to be in the neighborhood and saw some Christmas lights or saw saw a pagan Christmas tree in the living room, <laughs> we'd probably have a certified letter in our mailbox asking us to meet with the elders for, for apostasy <laughs> because Christmas is apostate. What is it, Jeremiah 10.3? Is that the one about Christmas trees? Um, <laughs> Something like that. I don't remember the exact that scripture. no other yeah. Christians follow anymore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. it was outlawed for a while, actually. Yeah, it wasn't until uh, even the 1900s, I think, yeah. when most it, of them uh, were allowed to have it. So what What about this 144,000 that everyone seems to know about oh. with, the, <laughs> with the witnesses? Well, that's um, it, the, the chapter in Revelation that's taken from, it, it's talking about 12,000 from this tribe, 12,000 from that tribe. Mm-hmm. And they simultaneously take it literal and symbolic. So the number, <laughs> the 144,000 number is literal. Um, but a lot of the other things are symbolic. Like they, you don't have to literally be a virgin uh, who hasn't defiled yourselves with women. To well, so the hundred, well, well, so backing it up just a little bit, the hundred and forty-four thousand is in reference to what? Um, that is the number that will go to heaven. They they believe in like of they, all the world's population, only a hundred forty-four thousand people will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, in, into heaven itself, yes. They believe in kind of dual hopes. You have. Uh, they 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 think of the little flock which they is the the hundred forty four thousand. Um, they're the ones who will rule with Christ in heaven as kings and priests. And the great crowd is any faithful, anyone faithful to Jehovah. So basically, just Jehovah's Witnesses and they'll all, be in middle any, management. All yeah. the leftovers, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, anybody Jehovah's Witnesses and anybody they think in the in the pre-Jehovah's Witness days, who who was faithful, <laughs> um, will the, the the earth will be restored to a paradise? And how does how does that like, work? Are, faithful uh, to what? Yeah. Like before the? How would they be faithful to anything if they didn't know that anything yeah. existed to be faithful to? Well, they, well, they, they still like, pray to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they like to to pick and choose certain prominent people throughout the Middle Ages and things who are trying to translate the Bible into the common tongues and things like that. And they, they kind of claim him as, oh, he was trying to spread the word of God. So obviously he is, he's one of our brothers before they just hadn't come to an accurate knowledge. And apparently God nah. wasn't ready to start guiding anybody yet. <laughs> well, and you said that, so you said that they're not uh, young earth creationists, but they believe that humanity has only been around for how long? Uh, 6,000 years or so. 6,000 yeah. years or so. So. So the 4,000 years until Christianity comes about, all of those people are just fucked? Like, they had no idea that Christianity was even a thing, so they can't be faithful in worship. They can't – I mean, th- there's no there's no worship of, of Jehovah or Jesus or anything, so fuck all of those people? Well, they believe that, that the faithful people from Old Testament times will – uh, be resurrected into the paradise on earth. Be, mm. But since that was pr- before Jesus' sacrifice, which made the way possible for people to enter into heaven, that that the, that's that's out of reach for them. But all the faithful Israelites, basically, because fuck everybody else, uh, <laughs> will <laughs> will will be resurrected in paradise. And and Jehovah may or may not allow the ones who who weren't super bad to be resurrected and maybe in little bunches so we can teach them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, maybe my dates are off. How, how old is the old Testament? What is that uh, dated to anybody? That's, uh, it is quite a bit uh, older. Because yeah. That's, I'm not exactly sure. Cause I, yeah, I guess I've never really thought about that a whole lot. 
Yeah, how old you is mean, the when Torah? They were, when they were written? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Google, how old is the Torah? When was the Old Testament written? And the answer is 6th century BC. So, okay. 600, so 2600 years time span. So basically, still, then you've got roughly 4,000 <laughs> years of humanity being around. Do they address that at all? Well, yeah, they, they talk about, uh, well, because the, the Bible refers to events earlier than when it was actually written. So clear from Adam, they, they figure there were faithful people and they're, Enoch and some others who were hmm. faithful, and they figure some of their kids probably heard grandpa's stories about <laughs> the Garden of Eden and everything. So until the Nephilim came and God had to annihilate everybody, there there were faithful people here and there that that'll be resurrected. Hmm. So they they don't completely ignore it. They they ignore the tens of thousands of years prior to <laughs> the Garden yeah. of Eden and the, all the civilizations that <laughs> were around before then. So hmm. all of them are just. They're going to be great crowded at best. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're pre Jesus, you're automatically um, you're disqualified from heaven. How do they explain <laughs> wow. the way? I mean, because that clearly seems like a little bit of an unfair situation. I mean, is that is that dealt with in any way? Or is I mean, is it like because the Mormons try to pull this whole well, they weren't they weren't as valiant, so it, it's okay, kind of bullshit, you know? No, I think it's just it's just accepted that since. Uh, it was the the covenant through the blood of Jesus um, that even opened up the way for people to, um, uh, what what do they call it? Whatever that covenant is, <laughs> where <laughs> you know he had the, at bullshit. the Last Supper, he had the the covenant with his his faithful apostles and everything, with the the wine and the bread and everything, and it was only through his death that that was made available. So, you know, King David and and all the rest of them would. It it just wasn't available to them because that hadn't been, um, hadn't been established yet. Yeah. So how do they view Judas as being the one who betrayed Christ? Because, I mean, it, it all had to come to pass for this to happen, and Judas played a big part in yeah. that happening. So he should be like the hero of the that's story, what I think. right? He, he should be, and I I have wondered that at times. That's just one of the <laughs> things that I kind of filed away. And you don't think about it again because if if you don't put it away, then you just have a growing pile of things that you, mm-hmm. that, that uh, don't make sense. So hmm. I, I had wondered that by the same logic, you're as a witness, you're taught to just pick apart all the flaws in other people's religions. <laughs> so that was one of my big things with Satan is he should be the he's working for God, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I've always wondered <laughs> yeah. the same thing, like. God created everything, so God created Satan, he created evil, he created hell, and God is the one who sends people to hell, and that's what Satan wants, is for people to go to hell. So God is doing Satan's work by sending people there, and like, they're supposed to be, you know, the the two greatest enemies yeah. of all time, uh, but yang. God is constantly rewarding Satan mm. with fresh souls every fucking day. <laughs> to build his army. Giving him exactly what he wants every day of the week. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're worried about an army coming out of hell and fighting a war, you, you got, God built the army. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah I, he's in charge of all that. Yeah. So I, I was free to, to criticize those beliefs since the witnesses don't believe in hell, so... And uh, never, never conflicted with my uh, my beliefs. They, so they don't believe in hell. What? So what happens to the really, really bad people? They're they're destroyed. <laughs> they, they're they just die. Poofed out of no, no hope of resurrection or anything further. So. Hmm. That's so much more compassionate, though. Yeah. yeah. Although witness parents can turn destruction at Armageddon into a very graphic, nightmare-inducing oh, sure, scenario. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they can. They don't have a hell to work with, so they use that. Yeah. 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 I've heard plenty of people talk about having nightmares when they're little kids about birds pecking people's eyes out and oh. just being, yeah, corpses scattered around being eaten by wild animals and all that stuff. So there's still plenty of yeah. plenty of room for nightmares. Those sound like lovely bedtime stories. <laughs> yeah. I know. I got a boner again. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> I mean, my parents weren't nice enough to give me bedtime stories like that. <laughs> oh, poor Ryan. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Hello, I'm Lloyd Evans. I'm a former Jehovah's Witness. I'm the author of The Reluctant Apostate and Senior Editor of JWSurvey.org, 
and you are listening to the Godless Revolution. This is just like it just comes out of a blizzard of of inanity and craziness. He's going after Meryl Streep. He's he's lying about Obama wiretapping him. Now he's he's threatening war with North Korea, and you know nobody knows what to talk about. So it's it's like the 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 consequence of this is we have a president who not only can he not be trusted to tell the truth, he can be trusted to lie whenever he thinks it suits his purpose. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. So you formally resigned from the Jehovah's Witness Church. How? What is involved with that? Do you... like? For the LDS Church, you know, your name is on an official roll, and they count you in their number when they say if the church is increasing in size, which, of course, they say it always is. And, you know, your your name is on an official record in a database somewhere that you'll be counted among God's people, and they send you shit and, <coughs> and will have people contact you for church callings and whatnot, so... What what is involved with a resignation from the Jehovah's Witness? I don't know what you're doing, man. <laughs> uh, well, I also kicked his foot while I was doing that. <laughs> so so you did you, you wrote a letter? Who does the letter go to? Um, it, it goes to the body of elders in our local congregation that we're members of. And I I don't know all of the logistics involved, but I do know that they maintain files on all members. Mm -hmm. And if you move, um, your file will be transferred to your new congregation. It's very, it, it's set up a lot like a business. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole thing, I mean, even the ministry is, the, they're pushing sales tactics on you to learn how to, how to move more watchtowers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So we, we wrote a letter to the local body of elders and asked that our name be removed. Um, it's kind of funny. Our, our printer was, I think it, there was something wrong with it. It was almost out of ink or something. And there was one line in our uh, letter of disassociation that said something to the effect of that we cannot in good conscience continue with this religion. And that was the only thing that printed out, but it printed out like five times just over. Oh. <laughs> so it was, it was clearly a sign from the Dark Lord. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it? she still has that page somewhere. Was it in <laughs> black ink? It, it was. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> Why do you, do you, do you print in red? Sometimes. Oh, okay. So not not blue. <laughs> so you so you send this off to the church elders what is the is there an immediate response are you contacted how did that all how did that all shake out initially um uh, well no they they didn't contact us at all and it had not for been for the immediate outpouring of hate after thanksgiving dinner we would that that's how we knew that it had been read <laughs> that, that, they, that somebody had actually seen it and had acted yeah, on that, it or whatever because uh, once they get it they'll they have their little discussion amongst them them and their elder buddies or whatever like what and, the fuck are they going? to... No, we're not going to let him leave. Yeah. No, then uh, then they they have to make an announcement to the congregation, which is basically letting everybody know to stay away from us, <laughs> to to officially shun you. Pretty much, yeah. They 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 actually used to have two separate announcements uh, for if someone was disfellowshipped or if they disassociated, but it raises a lot of questions if someone you know who was a faithful witness um, voluntarily leaves. So they just merged them into one announcement. They just say, brother so-and-so is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And so they had a double announcement that night, apparently. <laughs> and, and then everybody's mind immediately goes to, I wonder what they did wrong. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I was going to I was gonna ask, do they ever provide a reason why? Or is it just, um, they're no longer members, don't talk to them? Yeah, I, I, I think they did a long time ago, but not in, in my memory. But... <laughs> If there's ever like a, a a teenage brother and a, a a young woman in the congregation announced the same night, it's like I know what happened. <laughs> yeah, there. pretty much you can figure out what happened there, right? Yeah, yeah. They went and watched the submarine races. <laughs> <laughs> yes, loose conduct. <laughs> well, and you you mentioned m moving more watchtowers or something. What is what is the reference to the watchtower? Like that's the name of their publication or something, right? What is what is that? Where does that come from, though? Um, it's, uh, 
It, it goes way like I, back. I, whenever yeah. I hear it, I I hear Jimi Hendrix in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know exactly how to explain it, but um, it, it used to be called Zion's Watchtower, and just kind of referencing a an old old time watchtower, keeping a lookout. I don't know if they're watching for Armageddon because it's right around the corner. Or, or <laughs> It's a big but, corner. Yeah, it's, it's been coming for a long time now. But thankfully, I, I think they're actually starting to teach that we're in the beginnings of Armageddon, just because we've been waiting for it so, for so long. <laughs> they can be relieved that it's finally starting. It's just kind of slow. Yay, destruction! <laughs> <laughs> well, so that, that, that leads me to another question. Um, the Jehovah's Witnesses are are more of a modern apocalyptic large cult, right? Like the the Mormon Church or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints is called that because they believe we are in the latter days before God passes judgment and come you know, Jesus comes for his reign on earth, all of that bullshit, right? So is the Jehovah's Witness Church the same? It's it's that apocalypse is at our doorstep, it's going to happen anytime now. Yeah, and actually, to one up the Mormons. We're we're in the last days, so it's not just the latter days. We're we're in the last days. Mm. Yeah, so in, Armageddon is imminent. Everyone's mm. just waiting for Jesus to come. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's been coming for two thousand years. <laughs> well, that's right. I, I just remembered. So you're the one who actually re- referred uh, Lloyd Evans to yes. us when we yes. had him on the show. Yeah. Uh, because you're a former Jehovah's Witness and had watched some of his stuff and referred him to us. He was a great guest. Yeah. Me. And what an awesome voice. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could listen to that guy read anything. But, yeah, he, he mentioned that there were several different points throughout the history of the Jehovah's Witness Church where various leaders or various elders had predicted the date on which the world was going to end. <clears throat> And that none of those, of course, had come to pass. Is there a current date that the church thinks things are going to end? Uh, no, there's, there's not a current date. I, growing up, I was always kind of confused by, by the fact that there were ever dates for Armageddon because there are scriptures in the Bible that say no one knows no the man day knows the hour. Day, yeah. Yeah. So it, it never made any sense to me, but there, there haven't been any in my lifetime that I'm aware of, but I think the most recent major one was 1975. Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy. There are still witnesses who are around then and saw the the big panic, saw people selling their homes and giving up their businesses and moving to rural towns without congregations so they could, could do some last minute cramming and brown nosing. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, so they could ride out the yeah. final days in yeah. worship and be yeah. repentant and really called break to God's out the side. Knee pads and <laughs> uh, so I guess they've learned their lesson then that setting these dates probably isn't the best idea in the world. Yeah, yeah. It was, like I say, it's, it well, st- seems weird to me to begin with, but but yeah, they they've really steered away from that and just just replaced it with it. It, it could happen any moment. I mean, no, don't even have to worry about sending your kids to school if you need yeah because <laughs> they're, they're, they're not going to graduate well that uh, happened this last year i thought there was people that were trying to petition to not not have to allow their kids to go to school because if the armageddon comes what's the point <laughs> yeah uh, there's you, you hear that, that kind of stuff all the time you know you, parents telling their kids you're you're never going to finish school because armageddon's going to be here you're not going to do whatever no, you don't need to don't don't uh fund your 401k or anything because you're not going to retire <laughs> you just focus on the retirement that matters Bye-bye. john yeah john oliver mentioned something similar to that on his show this last week tonight yeah on uh, yesterday on sunday mm. uh that you know donald trump and the whole north korea thing is the greatest excuse for procrastinating things that you don't want to do because who knows the world may be over tomorrow <laughs> yeah. yeah we all may be in a nuclear apocalypse <laughs> Yeah. Do you mind if my wife says something real quick? No, no, no. Yeah. Her, her mom was really crazy with the whole education thing. Oh, yeah? yeah. She took me out of school when I was seven and oh. never did a goddamn thing after that. Oh, and wow. so I stayed home. That's where I got agoraphobia from because I just wasn't allowed to associate with anybody. So no middle school. I didn't finish elementary school. Wow. And it was just under the excuse that Armageddon is coming right around the corner and you don't need any of that. You'll never learn how to drive. You'll never need to know any of that. You'll never need to have a job because Armageddon is coming. And I would rather keep you out and keep you away from bad influences. 
So people are absolutely that crazy. Oh, wow. In our congregation, I know of six kids that were being homeschooled and none of them very well. They would like homeschool them two days a week and the rest of the days of the week, they would be out in service preaching door to door like these five-year-old kids going up to doors for like four to six hours a day and, and handing out tracts. And you'd have breaks in there, but like all day long. And their education was so far below anybody else's. And then socially, you become mm-hmm. backwards and awkward because mm-hmm. you're not used to being around kids. I was used to being around old people <laughs> <laughs> going to doors and giving out tracks. So when we. So you're very familiar with discussing the weather and. <laughs> yes. Well, we're just in your neighborhood today asking you a question about your belief in the Bible and do you believe in Jesus and who is that to you? You know, viewpoint questions. So yeah, all of that stuff. So when he gave the invocation, he already knew how to give talks and be up on a podium because <laughs> he had done that since he was probably, what, five? Eight. My first wow. talk was at five. So, yeah, they are absolutely that crazy. They do not educate their kids for nothing. <laughs> so so you guys met at, you said you met at Kingdom Hall, which is the Jehovah's Witness Church, right? So did... Did you ever get any more education, Myrna, or or how how has that gone since then? Uh, no, I never got any education. Um, I tried going to uh, GED classes mm-hmm. after I left uh, the Truth, and it was so difficult because they expect you to have a basic understanding of algebra. Walking in, like you did middle school, yeah. you did all of this. You should know how most of this works. And I had nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. So it was just like, well, this isn't going to do me any good because I don't know any of what you're talking about. So no, like I've never, I've never gotten an education past that. And basically to, to make money right now, I grow weed. <laughs> 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 like I'm just a dealer now. So it's fortunate that you guys live in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, because that's my only income. <laughs> wow. And you don't really need an educ. You can educate yourself on that one. Yeah. Just pick up a book about growing well, weed. You're good. Oh, wow. are, are there ever any times that you've heard of uh, child protective services being called in on parents for not giving their child an education and basically making them go out and? Well, for the most part, they can't get away with that anymore because when when that happened to us, um, we still had to take a test every year. So for the first year, I guess we took a test, and then we ended up moving to Colorado. So, uh, being off the grid, she never was accountable to anybody for, um, what do you call that? Truancy or something? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. She was yeah. never accountable for, for any of that because it just wasn't on a radar. Nobody knew to be checking that I was educated. There was one sister in our congregation that I was particularly fond of and who loved me like, like a second mother. She went to the elders with it and the elders were just like, well, she's doing what she thinks is best for, uh, for Myrna and Jehovah and you just got to let her do it. So she's like, being faithful. So yeah. yeah, we were being uber faithful. <laughs> <laughs> so nope, no education for this one, but I love to read voraciously. So what I would do is just uh, go to the library from the time that it opened in the morning to the time it closed. And I didn't really have much of anything I had to do. And they had these rolling bookshelves that were locked. And I figured out how to unlock them. And I would just squirrel myself away in these locking bookshelves and just (sighs) read whatever books got my fancy. And that's the only education I had. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That just, that seems so foreign to me. Like I can't. There, I, I have no frame of reference for even how how to deal it seems with something a, like that. Eighteen hundreds, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like how how you would manage your day to day life. Like I that. didn't. I, yeah. I I did whatever I wanted to do. Uh, my dad didn't work because he had uh, kidney failure, so he did dialysis. So uh, we would go out hiking, and I would, as long as I made meetings and studied before them, my mom didn't care, and she educated my brother because you know he was going to have to be a provider. Oh right, yeah. He's the, he's the patriarch. He's going to be a patriarch of the family, right? So he's got to be able to to know things. Yeah, and as a woman, she her her mom kind of figured she'd just be cooking and cleaning anyhow. So. Oh man, which is what I do, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really good at it now. <laughs> Did you find a lot of books about that? About cooking and cleaning? <laughs> yeah. Is that how you're no. so good at it? <laughs> no, I learned most of that from my aunt. I had a really nice auntie who uh. loved to bake, also a witness, who won't speak to me now, of course. Uh. And she taught me how to sew and bake and do things like that. Now Pinterest teaches me uh. because Pinterest is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is Matt Delahunty, and you're listening to The Godless Revolution. The state of mind that everyone's in, including the press, in listening to him is just is to take potentially the most serious things in the world not seriously, and the, the least serious things in the world, like, you know, Meryl Streep, or what he thinks of her acting, uh, you know, that becomes, a, that dominates a whole news cycle. It's, uh, it's very upside down, it seems to me, to be quite new, as opposed to, I mean, lies are, are perennial, but I feel like we're in a very different space now with, with, with the consequences of, of misinformation. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! So now that you're both out of the church, do you have any other family members or friends that are still in the church that you talk to? I know, Andy, you mentioned that you still talk to your brother. But is there anybody else that you were formerly associated with who are still witnesses who are committing the egregious sin of still voluntarily speaking with you? Uh, not for me, no. Um, my, my brother who's disfellowshipped is, is the only one. I, I believe one of, uh, Myrna's close friends is, uh, has he ever been baptized? He was never baptized. So it's kind of a loophole. If you're not baptized, you can kind of get away with associating with people outside the congregation under the guise of like encouraging them to come back to Jehovah as, as you make your own commitment. So it's, it's very loophole-ish and he doesn't approve of this satanic side of things, but <laughs> he is very loving and supportive. Uh, but he lives in Florida, so it's just a, f- a phone call once in a while from him, but every everybody else is uh, no lo- uh, not in the religion. And that's, that's one thing that's been very hard, especially as an introvert getting out in, in my thirties is just even just learning how to make friends again. Mm-hmm. Cause before I had just this prearranged group of people that I could pick from. And if, if there was maybe a couple people in my age group, so it was just kind of, th- those were who you had to choose from. You're and- going to be my friend. <laughs> Well, I was I was watching a uh, I was watching a video of a I don't know some you know more mainstream Christian talking about Jehovah's Witnesses because it's easier to find that than it is to find you know obviously talking about how false it is while trying to be like well they're all our brothers and sisters and I'm just trying to straighten them out kind of attitude but he's really just ripping on it yeah uh, but there was some interesting stuff in there and. One thing he said, which is kind of along these lines, and believe me, as he's talking about, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses just make stuff up and blah, blah, blah. My chariots of irony meter was going crazy. (laughs) But he said the sad thing is that people are so confused when they start to come out of it. They've got decades of wrong thinking ingrained, which, of course, he does, too. But uh, but this is I I think I think it seems like from what you're saying uh, with Witnesses, it's so much more oppressive and immersive. Yeah, it, it, I, especially with my upbringing, um, number one, as being very introverted. You mean by a Russian hitman? <laughs> that, <laughs> raised by a Russian hitman? <laughs> I don't even know if you're, I don't even know if your name's Russian. It just uh, sounds like it is. Uh, Slavic. Okay. So Croatian hitman. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, being extremely introverted. And then on top of that, when we were living in northern Nevada, we were very rural. Elko is by no means a large town. Right. And then there's a small settlement outside of Elko Ways. And if you drive even farther, <laughs> is where I live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's little ranchettes, like 10 and 40 acre parcels. Oh, wow. So uh, there were no witnesses out there for me to hang out with. So even some people may have had witnesses in their neighborhood that they could have at least hung out with. Uh, I had my goats and <laughs> some chickens. <laughs> ah, goats. That explains the Satanism. Uh, that explains it right there. <laughs> and the goatee. Hanging out with Black Phillip and Baphomet at night. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you actually named your goat Baphomet as a child? That would have been cool, but that, I didn't even know uh, who Baphomet was, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> that, was, that was very uh, innocent. <laughs> so what? what among all of the various and sundry beliefs that Jehovah's Witnesses hold, what do you think is the, like, craziest or most out there weird belief that they have? 
<laughs> Myrna's clapping Let's... her hands. Ooh, this should be good. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll let you take this one after me. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's hard to pick the most crazy, but I know one thing. I'm sure you've heard about 1914 being a very pivotal date for the witnesses. But if you if you ever run across a witness who is actually able to explain how how that came about, the the math involved and the prophecy and everything, it all hinges on the date of 607 BC, which is supposedly the date that uh, Jerusalem was captured by Babylon, the temple was destroyed, and all that. Mm. But if you are open minded enough to type it into Google, <laughs> every single reputable uh, historical resor- re- resource um, shows that it was 587 BCE, uh, but 607 fits the math. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that that entire prophecy crumbles because that one date is off by 20 years. So, Jesus yeah. should have come back in 1934, according to that, <laughs> or, or not come back, but started reigning invisibly in heaven. Uh, yes. Uh, well, how do you know he didn't? Well, he might have. <laughs> Mid 1930s was when World War II started rolling. Yeah, well, they they like they like 1914 because supposedly the first thing Jesus did when uh, taking the throne is kick Satan out of heaven, and so he's banished to Earth, and uh, having great anger, knowing he has a short period of time, so he's pissed <laughs> off, and uh, so he. He started Jeez, World God, War you sent me down here. I don't have much time to torture people. Come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough that happened in 1934 to, <laughs> for them to yeah. just really promote. Uh, and uh, oh, Let me give this over to my wife and see what she thinks. Okay. As far as the craziest belief that they had, when you're little, you get this uh, Bible stories book, right? Uh-huh. And at the back of the Bible stories book, it's about the New Order, what they called it back in my day. And um, That was a great band. <laughs> <laughs> the new order was the paradise. It was God's new order on earth, right? And you see, you know, everybody's happy. There's somebody riding an elephant in a sarong and there's a little fish pond over here. And then you've got this little girl riding a tiger. And that was, that was my thing. I was like, in the new order, I'm going to ride a tiger. <laughs> so what they believe is in the new order, lions and tigers and things that normally would just nom nom you are going to be peaceful. <laughs> And everybody's going to be copacetic with the animals. It'll be like Adam and Eve days, right? So to explain that, they say, well, God's going to make them go back to eating grass. Mm -hmm. So the craziest belief that I feel like they have is that I'm going to be riding a flat-toothed tiger in the new order. (laughs) Like I'm just going to be out there with my hair in the breeze riding this flat-toothed grazing tiger. (laughs) Or for that matter, a shark, which was what going to eat krill? I don't know. (laughs) That's an animal too, though. R- right? Well, <laughs> animals can eat each other, just not humans. So, oh, okay. Plants okay. are living creatures, too. So I always thought that that was like, after after I left, I was like, how did I ever believe that for most of my adult life? Like, <laughs> what happened? And that was one of the reasoning points that somebody had for me, trying to get me to see that I was in a cult. I was like, all right, so let me get this straight. You're going to ride a flat-toothed tiger. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Is the tiger going to be happy, or is he going to be, like, sad? He doesn't get steaks anymore. <laughs> so I always figured that, like, that is the silliest belief Well, and ever. would their teeth be, like, changed all of a sudden? Or yeah. will they just be, like, born from a certain date, they all just have flat teeth? I think they'd be changed all of a sudden, because then you'd have hungry tigers at the beginning, and God ah. wouldn't want to let the tiger suffer. All of humanity. Certainly let that suffer. He, yeah, not. he wouldn't want the tigers to suffer this time, but fuck all the tigers in the flood, mm-hmm. you know, right. except for the two that get on the bone or whatever. Well, they were faithful tigers, so <laughs> the rest of them were atheists. <laughs> I just got a weird image in my head of a tiger with human teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it'd be like cow teeth, right? Because they're grazers. Yeah. But still. True. But human teeth is more humorous in my brain. It is more human. Yeah, it is. Especially just, if he's smiling. I just keep picturing her with a saddled tiger, and then when she stops to get that dramatic photo, and it goes... <laughs> <laughs> Makes it somewhat less dramatic. Because, of course, we're going to have selfies in the new order. You have yeah. to. That's not happiness without selfies. No. <laughs> I've taken like three since we've been in the studio. <laughs> They're on Facebook already. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> All right. So we're getting, uh, we're getting a little short on time. I want to make sure that we get to what you've been doing more recently, of course. Um, 
you delivered the invocation and you you offered a satanic invocation so what led you from jehovah's witness to atheist what what got you started on the left hand path uh probably podcasts <laughs> um <laughs> those I, evil evil podcasts you're I, welcome <laughs> i i think uh the the first exposure i had to the satanic temple was an interview with lucian greaves um i think it might have been him at meta and it it piqued my interest but didn't really go anywhere from there and then i i hear a little bit more and then i started actually seeking out uh more interviews and more information um which is i think pretty sure how i find you guys podcast as well looking for interviews with lucian he's a really good guy yeah yeah we love that guy he's a whole lot of fun and just <clears throat> doing awesome work yeah and that's so smart every, everybody that i've known who's associated with the temple are just phenomenal human beings mm-hmm. yeah and I, I i think i went through the the standard process of at first i was just attracted to the work they were doing didn't really see the the deeper philosophies and uh, the the non-theistic religion aspect i just my my first thought was they're trolling christians with their own superstition this fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> and uh so i i got a little more involved and then uh i i got to a point where i realized that even though i no longer believed in any supernatural I still had these little reservations, these little bits of superstitious fear that even though I knew there was nothing to it, I knew there were no demons, there was no devil, nothing like that. So to just kind of give the middle finger to my superstitions, I went and signed up as a member of the Satanic Temple. But, but yeah, because there's still that little bit of trepidation, right? That yeah. Those niggling little feelings of, well, what if? Yeah. Like, I, I, I know, well, or I'm pretty sure God doesn't exist, but what about the devil? Yeah. Like, what if that? What if the devil really does exist, or or demons, or just evil, just evil in general? And what if my involvement with that is going to lead me on a dark path, yeah. and all sorts of bad things will start falling on me? Yeah, I had just enough of the satanic panic left in me to. <laughs> but I, I I did that as a symbolic gesture, and uh, started following him more closely, and uh, just learning more, and uh, then. I, I I got to looking around to see if there was any if there was a chapter in Colorado and there wasn't so I started looking for um any, any uh, groups in Colorado of any sort and there weren't any so for a couple of weeks I kind of toyed with the idea of starting a little Facebook group in Colorado uh, and then so one one morning I think I was on my lunch break at work like 4 a.m. I just I threw together a little wait a lunch break at 4 a.m. yeah I was. <laughs> How does I, I was, that work? I was night shift back in those days. <laughs> I, I had the the fun duty of driving across the Rockies twice a night in the winter Oy. with doubles. Oy. <laughs> uh. So I was I was in Denver, and I just I threw together the uh, Friends of TST Colorado Facebook group and advertised it on the official forum, and we got a few people in. I I posted on there a couple times. Like I'd wait a month and then post it again, and we get a few people every time. And then, uh, well, that was, it was June of 2016 that I started that group. And, uh, by December, we had got some, some people who were really interested and really, uh, motivated and had more time than I did. And they, they really kind of took the wheel and started getting things moving, um, looking into what was required to become an official chapter, which we haven't quite got yet. They're still, still, in the works, but we're extremely close because the I think the last requirement that we had was for our group to hold a successful public event, which we did last month, July eighth, mm-hmm. I believe it was in Denver. We oh, had, so you're so you're trying to become an official chapter of the Satanic Temple? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. We uh, our Facebook group is uh, as of this morning had ninety five members, not all of them in Colorado, but uh, quite quite a few have had a lot of interest, mm-hmm. and so last month. For our official event, we had a satanic-themed art show in Denver at the Cabal Art Studio mm-hmm. um, with the theme of the Seven Tenets, so every one of the, the pieces could in some way be applied to one of the Seven Tenets of the Satanic Temple. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And we had a really good turnout. I think we tripled the amount of people we were expecting to be there. Didn't really have anybody causing any trouble. Almost got a few Mormon missionaries to check it out before they figured <laughs> out what was going on. Which is pretty awesome. And, uh, so that went really well. Jack and Turco came up from Arizona, and he helped out with the setup and everything. Got to 
hang out with him the next day and get to learn some more aspects of Satanism that I wasn't familiar with. Yeah, Jack's a good dude. Like I said, everybody that I've met through the temple has just been great, <clears throat> great human beings. Yeah, that I, that's, that's one thing I found with the Satanic Temple that I haven't had since leaving the Witnesses is I, I feel like I have people now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I have some some people that are some friends and this sneaky woman next to me. <laughs> got, got in touch with them behind my back and uh that art show was a couple was about a week after my birthday and so we snuck out to get something to eat before the art show and she smuggled all of all of the satanic temple friends from denver in the back door and had a little surprise birthday party for me at a, a czechoslovakian restaurant in denver <laughs> oh, that's, cool. so, that's awesome yeah so it, was, it it's been really cool <laughs> yes, Tell dear. us about your present. Yes, she. I, I managed to managed to drive all the way to Denver with a guitar in, in the in the trunk that she went behind my back again because she's sneaky that way. <laughs> and uh, got. I, I had just barely put a few bucks on down on it on layaway, and she went behind my back and <laughs> bought the guitar, and I drove all the way to Denver with it in the trunk without knowing. <laughs> And uh, never had a surprise party before, so I was more confused than anything when everybody walked in. And <laughs> at some point, I was like, "Man, that guitar looks familiar." <laughs> 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 so that was that was my second ever birthday party, my my first wow. with with outsiders. Wow! Was, yeah, well, yeah, cool. because Jehovah's yeah. don't do birthdays, right? No, no, that's uh, all the holidays and birthdays and everything is brand new. So we just had her. Second birthday party <laughs> about a week ago. Yeah, last last weekend was her her birthday. Well, happy birthday, belatedly. Thank you. Birthdays are awesome, and they're the most important satanic holiday. Yes. <laughs> so it's That's fantastic. That is cool. Yeah. So you're trying to get official chapter recognition from the satanic temple. Yes, and we're we are very close. Um, we we. Uh, I, I think as of right now, all we're waiting to do is hear back from the National Council. Uh, Shalice Blythe is our sponsor with the National Council. Who's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sad that she moved to Arizona, but yeah. I hope she's very, very happy there. We're going to have to force them to come back here for something. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So we're, we're just waiting to hear back. They, they've already uh, done a couple interviews with uh, the, the, the members that are going to be the uh, chapter head and the spokesperson or media liaison. And they're doing some background checks just to make sure, because Satanism does attract some crazies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've had a few. Had to bounce a few out of our group. <laughs> <laughs> As of a couple of days ago, we got rid of some. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's been crazy just in the last year to go from starting a little Facebook group, and you know, we're almost 100 members now. Well, and, and to uh, think that just two years ago... You were a, a believing Jehovah's Witness who was all in, and yeah, I, I do things fast. <laughs> it's, it's been a wild couple of years. Yeah, man, it sure seems like it. Well, it's I, like you're you're experiencing a whole new world. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to experience all there is, and I've been so uh, confined for so long that we're just seeking our own happiness and trying to. Trying to be happy and live a, a good life and not hurt anybody in the process. Yeah, that's awesome. And and kudos to both of you for Indeed. for you doing that. I mean, that's I, I was never a true believer, so I can't really relate. But I can only imagine how terrifying just the thought of leaving behind everything you've grown up with your entire life would be. Like for me, it was easy because. Like I said, I was never a, a true believer in anything. Well, so. gingers don't get to have that connection <laughs> with God. <laughs> true. <laughs> so, so like I said, it, it was easy for me. I can't, I can't really sympathize with somebody who's had to go through that. I can only imagine how hard it would be. And I mean, just, just for, for me, even not being a, a true believer and going through the things that I've gone through with friends and family members. I can only imagine how much more amplified and magnified that would be for somebody who was all in, and that's all you've known for your entire life up to that point. Yeah, and especially with the Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> if you were to ask a, a believing Jehovah's Witness to describe themselves, to tell you who they are, the 
first foremost identifying trait that you have is you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So when you when that all collapses, mm. you kind of have to even figure out who you are. Yeah, because that's your identity is dissolved. Yeah, you have to create a new identity for yeah. yourself, right? It's it's also kind of like that everybody you know, love and have known and loved for all of your life get on a plane and crash. But, yeah. but you still get to see them walking around, and it's like seeing the ghost of them, because they're not even allowed to look at you. They can't hug you, they can't talk to you, it's complete yeah. shunning. So you still have to see them, but you're grieving for them because you miss them. You don't stop loving them because you find out they're in a cult, and you were in a cult. But they can't even look at you, so you have no recourse, But unless you want to F up their day. But to just let oh, them Oh, you go. can swear on the show. That's fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I've seen people that I absolutely love at the grocery store, and I just want to go hug them. And it's like a physical need. Like, I love this person, and I want to hug them so bad, and I haven't seen them in two years. But I know that if I were to even hug them, it would fuck their whole day up because they are grieving for me, too. But they have no choice because if they decide to be part of my life, they will also lose everybody that they know and love which is a really powerful threat when it's even your mother. Like, I've seen my mother out and about and just been like, yep, that's my mom. Now, she's a crazy cunt to begin with. But it doesn't Sorry, Ryan's mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But she's still, like, you still love her, and you still have this need to go hug your mom. But, you know, like, if I go over there and hug her, she's either going to curse me out or start crying. So I better just walk away. And that's like the hardest part for me because I God, love that's, people. That's heartbreaking. I can't even imagine. I, I'm I feel so terribly for you guys for for having to go through that and for a church that would impose that on people who choose to just not believe in that anymore, or, or who not who choose to not believe who, but who just can't believe in that anymore. Because you realize that it's it's just complete mind control. And so you have this compassionate need to tell them, but you know that if you even go down that road with them, they're just going to hate you more. Yeah. And and at some point you just get fed up, I think, with with the bad looks and the and the hatred that come from most of them. The people that love you love you, they they just get emotional. The people that oh, they were acquaintances, now they hate you because you've made your loved ones cry. So at some point I just was like, you know what? No, I'm not going to be sad every time I see one of these people. I'm going to uh, anger is easier to deal with. Let's go with that. Yeah. So I walked into a kingdom hall with one of my friends. Uh, <laughs> his name is Zeb, and he just stormed the stage because this is what he does. He goes to, from kingdom hall to kingdom hall, storms the stage, tells them about uh, apostate websites before they're about to say the prayer, and then tells them, "Stop shunning your children. You should be ashamed of yourselves. They miss you very much." And he did that at like my home kingdom hall and one other. And I went, I went to the other with him because it wasn't as painful as going to my home kingdom hall. Um, and it was, they just looked around like they had no idea what to do, but it was terribly empowering because I hadn't been to a kingdom hall in two years and I knew that I would get some hate for it. And they, they definitely escorted him out, but uh, a lot of them didn't know who I was. So I, I stayed back and I was like, what? Because he said, oh, there's pedophiles in the kingdom halls and you all need to know about it. And I was like, what? There's pedophiles? Oh, I don't want to study anymore. And then I st <laughs> I stormed out. So like, at some point, you just get tired of, of their hatred for you and go, okay, you want to do that, do you? I'll be a Satanist and I'll fuck up your meeting. <laughs> you know, this kind of reminds wow. me of a, a little bit like hearing all these stories and stuff. It's that interview we did with Roy Jeffs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are talk. definitely some similarities. Yeah. Where you just leave your entire world Where behind. everything is just yeah. gone and, you know, because he was, I think, a couple years, two years or three years out, too, when he was sitting here. Yeah. And it was the same kind of thing. You're just totally starting over and none of us knew what to say about it. You know, we, we haven't had that experience. And so I just find myself feeling the same kinds of things as, you're, as you guys are saying this as I did when you were sitting here. Like, fucking religion, man. God damn it. Yeah. One, one thing with the witnesses, uh, as opposed to a lot of other cults, is they they do separate themselves from society, but it's not a physical separation. So they they still live in the same towns. They don't have compounds or anything like that. But so so you're you're still bumping into people <laughs> quite a right, bit. Right. And uh, I I guess one 
one good thing, as opposed to things like the FLDS, is having lived out. You're not uh, completely dependent on them for your your livelihood necessarily. I, there are people out there whose employers are witnesses and things like that, who have lost employment and and uh, even places to live when they left. But being that it's not a li- living on a compound or something, it, it's not uh, not quite as drastic adjusting to the the real world in that respect, but there, there are a lot of kind of wake up calls. It's different. I wasn't, my, my intention was not to draw the comparison to trivialize either one of the situations in any way. I'm just, I'm just saying that I don't really know what to say about this. Like, you know, we're just sort of at a loss, at least. Yeah. yeah. It's just so bizarre and, and different to what most people experience. I think that that level of shunning, uh, Mm -hmm. it's disgraceful. I think if there yeah. was a shunning award, they would definitely get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and I, I think, I mean, you just, you have my complete empathy and 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 just feeling of how terrible that must be, and also every bit of congratulatory praise that I can offer you for choosing to leave when you knew what the consequences would be. Mm-hmm. That's that's an incredibly mm-hmm. brave move, and and I I. Salute you both for doing it. Yeah. yeah. Once, at least, at least for me, once I realized that it, it wasn't the truth, and I, I had the good fortune of having the foundational document to lose all credibility. There are a lot of people who leave and go straight to other religions and, and right. things like that. But realizing the Bible was a bunch of shit, the and that's the foundation. So everything collapsed after that. And I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> but uh, We were also kind of lucky in that we got to leave together. And if you don't have a mate that leaves with you, it, also, it, it often means divorce because you are at odds with them and probably trying to convince them that what they are believing isn't true. But thankfully, I took Andy down to the place that he proposed to me at, and I sat him down and I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I don't think I believe in it. I don't believe in God anymore. I can't do any of this. And and I was just terrified that he would be like upset because he married this witness girl. I met him when I was 12 and absolutely fell in love with him and he married he married me when I was 18. So we we have always been together in whatever we do, including satanism. And I was just terrified that he was going to be upset that he married a witness girl. And she changed her mind, and that's not fair. That's how I felt. Well, this isn't really fair to Andy, because he thought I was going to be this one thing forever, and now I'm totally not that thing anymore. But I was lucky in the fact that he then found out pretty quickly that it was it was bullshit, and he, we got to leave together. So we got to sign that letter jointly. We didn't send two different letters. We signed that letter, both of us, and we walked out together. And that was, like, the biggest blessing, because you, when you have your mate, you're not alone, you know? And you have each other every night to go, you know what? You're right. You're right. No, it's okay. Because you have doubts when you're leaving. Like, maybe I did the wrong thing. I don't know. I'm going to lose everybody. But, you know, at the end of the night, we could look at each other and say, no, we're right in this. You know, these people are are wrong and they're destructive. And we got to go. Yeah, we we took slightly different paths out, but they intersected right on the way out. And so there were times that she was worried and she looked at me as like, this, this isn't true, is it? And I was like, no. <laughs> it, it's not. She she had a very very emotional path out with dealing with uh, people treating her badly and and uh, the PTSD and anxiety and everything that she was dealing with. And just when once I started doing the research and realized I, I'd I'd show her all the stuff that all these ways they were wrong, all the stuff that didn't add up, yeah. and it was just like a, a, a relief for her too yeah. to know that because there there are a lot of people that leave who never get out mentally. So you have people who are no longer witnesses, but fully are just waiting for God to annihilate them at Armageddon, oh. just waiting because they still believe it's the truth, but they can't maintain that lifestyle. They can't keep up with the the grind constantly. And so we were we were very fortunate to to still have each other and to to be out mentally. Yeah, and it's times like that, you know, like you're describing when you can. When you get out and you can take a take a minute and and kind of 
gather yourself and look back and know that's when Bigfoot was carrying you. She used to tease me because uh, I love Bigfoot documentaries. <laughs> I still like them sometimes, too. Yeah. I just saw that weird smile coming on Matt's I face. Know, I'm like, <laughs> like, Matt's going to do something here. There's a smirk on that face. I know. I couldn't do it. Couldn't hold it all the way to the end. <laughs> I blew my smile load too early. <laughs> it happens to lots of guys. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for being here tonight with us. We're going to move into the Patreon portion of the show here shortly. Can you guys stick around for that? I'm down. Awesome. All right. Uh, before we go, I want to be sure to let you all know that uh, I will. We're going to be first. We're going to be moving the release date of the show. Ryan's schedule yeah. is shifting. I'm fucking so, shit up again. So we will be moving the release date of the show from Mondays to probably Wednesday. I want to say right now because we'll be recording on Friday. So. Because I have a real job, and I'm on the board for Atheists of Utah, and I work with American Atheists, and I still have, like, yard work and other shit to do on top of all of that, and family stuff to deal with. I need some time to edit the show, so we'll probably move the release date from Monday to Wednesday. We'll be recording on Fridays. I will be at the American Atheists Convention by the time most of you are hearing this. I fly out on Friday. And we'll be returning Tuesday after the eclipse on Monday, which is when the majority of you will be able to first hear this. Uh, our Patreon the supporters, world ends. yeah, <laughs> our Patreon supporters will be hearing it before then. But Monday is the prime primary release date for everybody else. Uh, so hopefully, you all had a clear view of the eclipse wherever you are. If you're in the path of totality, that's awesome. Hopefully, you got a good shot of it. There wasn't any clouds or anything. I think that's about it. Other than thanking all of our Patreon. wonderful Patreon supporters, that would be Larry Wilson, Marius Butrakowski, Dr. Dan Matt's boss from the 2SC podcast, to whom we pledge loyalty. <clears throat> what? Janet Uter, Let Them Eat Kofefe, Stephen Andrus, Mo Calbell, Christy Kalbach. Megan Kennedy is a new Patreon hey! supporter. Yay! We love her. She was so much fun on the show. Oh, yeah, she was. I had a great time with her. She's so cool. Uh, Andrew Vodapich increased his Patreon support. Hey! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, appreciate that. <laughs> 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 He's coming out here. <laughs> Alicia Gerhardt, Brandy Hamrick, Jeremy Goodson, Angelica Pearson, Andy Faulkner, Utah Outcasts, Wes Aaron, Taylor Grin, and a modified name from the Purple Dragon, who is now fuck you and your I still don't qualify rules. <laughs> Savit Acuna and the Gaytheist Mr. Aaron Burton, who I believe would have had his shirt delivered today. I'm Ooh, still curious on the day of recording. how uh, one of our patrons is a gay theist. A gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's atheist, but gay. <laughs> gay theist. It's, yeah. I very nearly changed my Patreon name to Blue Apron a while back. Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I would have had to have refused or said. Dude, what are you kidding me? You do the it. you do the two skeptical chaps bullshit every week. We, <laughs> we did make the rule. We got to stick to it. Yeah, but oh, okay. Well, I would do it, but then I would shit on whatever Blue Apron is doing because we're gonna need to put an end to this really quickly because people are gonna start to get creative and make us say a bunch of bullshit we don't want to fucking say. <laughs> mean that I can change it to Andrew Vodpich magic pants or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unicorn sure. wiener man or something? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you like, dear. As long as you have the password, which you're not getting. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but thank you all very much for tuning in. We're going to move into the Patreon portion of the show. And so until next time... Crucify that like button. Leave a review to achieve nirvana. And rate the show five times a day toward Brooklyn. Brooklyn? <laughs> Andrew gets it. <laughs> Did you start the timer? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled it up, and of course I didn't start the timer. Why would That's... I do that? I am a liberable... Liberable... Liberable...
I've got white rum, coconut rum, dark rum. <laughs> Have whatever you'd like. He's got a bar. I see how much tea is in your glass. So just... <laughs> I'm going to put more tea in it, as far as you know. 